Hello everyone, welcome back. Tom with Capo Fetish. Today we're going to talk about our 10 favorite albums from 1964. An incredible year, British Invasion, a lot of great jazz, a lot of great pop, a lot of great soundtracks, a lot of great new things happening that year. So I'm going to start it off here with the first Kinks album, number 10. Of course, it uh, features the iconic You Really Got Me, a sound that had never been heard before. By Dave Davies slashing the cone of his speaker and creating that incredible distorted effect that would go on to influence thousands of bands. Um, also, that guitar solo is absolutely phenomenal for that early period in 64. Nothing was really heard like that until then. That, along with All Day and All the Night, incredible guitar solos from, from such an early period. Um, not a lot of Ray Davies penned songs. You got Stop Your Sobbing, which was featured on the first Pretenders album. Uh, you have uh, a song called Revenge, which the Pretenders, I think, kind of took some, some influence from there uh, by uh, writing the phone call, which was another instrumental on their first album. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of typical covers from the era that a lot of bands were doing uh, to just fill a record up because this is kind of pre-album rock, right? So we got Beautiful Delia, So Mystifying, Just Can't Go to Sleep, Long Tall Shorty. I Took My Baby Home is another real early song by the Kinks. Uh, by, written by Ray. Uh, Too Much Monkey Business, Got Love If You Want It. A lot of songs, several songs written by or sung by Dave Davies, a young 17-year-old Dave Davies. But uh, an important, uh, important record just for the fact that it introduced a whole new sound to pop music. And that's why I'm including it in this list. At number 10, The Kinks. Coming in at number 2 is the first album by The Rolling Stones. England's newest hit makers. Of course, this was called just the Rolling Stones in the UK version. Uh, you've got uh, a lot of cool covers. Carol, which was featured later on the live Get Your Yaya's album out. And we've got Little by Little, Honest I Do, Route 66. Uh, I think the only Jagger Richards composition on here is Tell Me. I think that was their original first song that they wrote. But all the, uh, all the traits of the Stones are set in place early on here. We've got the weaving of Brian Jones and uh, Keith Richards' guitar. We've got the snarling vocals of Mick Jagger, the steady beat of, um, of Charlie Watts, and, and of course the great bass playing of Bill Wyman. Everything's in place. They just haven't been writing their own songs at this point, but uh, this sets the stage for better things to come. The Rolling Stones, English, England's newest hit makers coming in at number nine. Coming in at number eight, we've got the Beach Boys All Summer Long. A great album uh, featuring some really great Brian Wilson Penn songs. He's kind of moving forward at this point, moving into more, a uh, little more, should we say, uh, sophisticated material rather than just uh, surfer songs. We've got, um, of course, All Summer Long. We've got um, Little Honda. Wendy's a great showcase for their amazing harmonies. We've got uh, Don't Back Down, which I think was on a later album or an earlier album, and they're just packing it in on here. Uh, what else do we have? Do You Remember? Girls on the Beach, too, is a great early Beach Boys ballad. A uh, song I first heard on the Endless Summer uh, record years ago. So, yeah, a, really, uh, a pretty solid record from the Beach Boys. One of their earlier great period albums before Pet Sounds. All Summer Long coming in at number eight. And at number seven, we've got The Beatles for Sale. This is The Beatles' fourth album. Half of the songs are original, half of the songs are covers. Uh, all the songs that are original are phenomenal. You've got Eight Days a Week, I Don't Want to Spoil the Party, Babies in Black, uh, No Reply, uh, I'm a Loser, uh, I'll Follow the Sun, great McCartney track. Uh, also, you've got a lot of just subpar covers, you know, kind of like Honey Don't, Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby, uh, Kansas City, I think at this point, uh, they were pretty much um, kind of searching for material to fill out an album. I mean, let, let's face it, 64 was probably their busiest year between concerts, recording, press conferences. So you really can't blame them for just um, packing in the filler for this album. But I think all the originals on here are top tier Beatles. And uh, this is coming in at number seven for me on my list of 64 albums. Coming in at number six is... Uh, coming in at number six is John Coltrane's Crescent album. This is the album that was released right before A Love Supreme. Some really great tracks. The first uh, track, Crescent, very long, drawn-out tune, really builds up. Features some really interesting stuff going on there. 
You got Wise One and Bessie's Blues ending side one. Uh, Lonnie's Lament and the drum thing on side two. Kind of a good transitional album. I think this may have been his first album from Impulse. I like his early Impulse records like this one and A Love Supreme, uh, along with the Atlantic Years. I love those, those albums as well. But yeah, great album here from John Coltrane coming at number six, Crescent. And coming in at number five from Herbie Hancock is just an absolute jazz class, classic, Empyrean Isles, featuring the uh, famous song Cantaloupe Island, which has been featured in a lot of movies and commercials and adverts and things. Uh, you've got One Finger Snap on here, The Egg, just a, a phenomenal last track, 13 minutes. Um, you have some, a couple of, uh, couple of bonus tracks on this uh, Blue Note remaster. One of, one of his greatest albums, along with Maiden Voyage. This is coming in at number five for me on my list from 1964. Coming in at number four is a great transitional album from Bob Dylan, Another Side of Bob Dylan. Right here, he's kind of abandoning his protest era and uh, the topical songs and going into more of a surreal, kind of a uh, stream of conscious type uh, lyrical writing. Uh, a lot of songs on here were covered by other artists. Uh, several by the birds themselves. Um, I re All I Really Want to Do, covered by the birds and Cher. Spanish Harlem Incident off the Mr. Tambourine album, Chimes of Freedom, same thing. Uh, you also got In Ain't Me Babe, covered by the Turtles. A lot of inspiration from uh, gained from other acts after this album came out. Um, you've got the absolute phenomenal, um, uh, what is it, uh, My Back Pages which the birds did really, really well on Younger Than Yesterday. Uh, you got Ballad in Plain D, very long, very long drown out song, which I don't really care for. Black Crow Blues, don't really care for that, but I'd say most of the record I love. Um, Tom Ramona is one of my favorite songs on the album. Just a really, really great album that no one really talks too much about in the Dylan canon. And I think it's, you know, it's up there with some of his great mid period albums. Maybe not as good as Highway 61, but Pretty solid, pretty solid. This is coming in at number four for me. Bob Dylan's Another Side of Bob Dylan. Coming in at number three is uh, it's just a phenomenal uh, album by Wayne Shorter, jazz artist Wayne Shorter, who we lost this year. This is Night Dreamer. And this, along with Speak No Evil, are two of my favorite Wayne Shorter albums. This is not a bad, bad cut on this record. Uh, Night Dreamer, the title track. You've got... Uh, Oriental Folk Song, Virgo, Black Nile, Charcoal Blues, and Armageddon. And then you've got a uh, an alternate take of Virgo on this. This is a Blue Note remaster. It came out probably late 90s, I believe. But yeah, if you've ever heard Wayne Shorter's Blue Note period, check it out. It's just phenomenal. This is great, great, great jazz from the, the mid-60s here. So Wayne Shorter, Night Dreamer, coming in at number three for me. Coming in at number two is an absolute bossa nova classic, the Getz Gilberto album featuring the famous The Girl from Infanima, sung by Astrid Gilberto, who again we lost again this year. We're losing a lot of the greats. Um, more songs. Every song in here is just amazing, uplifting, life affirming. Corcovado, gorgeous song, and just a lot of great bossa nova tracks. This should be featured, uh, this should be, if you have a record collection, you don't have any Bossa Nova, this should be your first purchase right here. It gets Gilberto album on the Verve label. Can't go wrong with this. This is a really uplifting record. This is coming in at number two. And then uh, coming in at number one is one of the greatest, earliest Beatle albums, in my opinion. Hard Day's Night, a flawless record. Great film, just iconic. Every song on here is absolutely joyous and wonderful and just... Uh, Uplifting. This is probably their most joyous album they ever released. Uh, just side one alone, Hard Day's Night, I Should Have Known Better, If I Fell, I'm Happy Just to Dance With You, and I Love Her, Tell Me Why, Can't Buy Me Love, all from just the movie. Side two is equally as good, songs not from the movie. Anytime at all, I'll Cry Instead, Things We Said Today, When I Get Home, You Can't Do That and I'll Be Back. Incredible, credible album. One of my favorite Beatle albums, top five here. Um, so many great early Lennon songs. Uh, Lennon definitely um, is is definitely the leader on this record as far as most songs sung and uh, written. You do have some phenomenal McCartney tracks, and I love her. Can't buy me love. 
things we said today. And then you've got George singing, I'm happy just to dance with you. But yeah, just five star album all the way. This is probably the uh, pinnacle of pop music in 1964. The Beatles, Hard Day's Night. And that's my top 10 favorite. Please put your top 10 favorite in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. We have more content coming up before the end of the year. I'm going to do a um, XCC top 25 songs, uh, favorite songs. I'm going to do some a Christmas list and a few other little things. So uh, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye.